we've just played you that line from the UN ambassador that this is Israel's 9-11 moment. You've worn many different uh, caps in Israel. Um, you are in Jerusalem now. How would you define this 9-11 moment for Israel from your perspective? Good morning. Well, I think currently, uh, really, there is a state of shock and terrible sorrow about the horrors that we see on television, the massacre that took place in our communities near the border. And there is a great concern about what's coming. There is a great uncertainty about the unfolding of the war. I would say that the only silver lining is seeing Israel is really mobilized and coming together, volunteering on every front, including to reserve duty. Mm -hmm. So this is really the state of affair right now and great mm -hmm. uncertainty about what's coming. Yes, I mean, we, we, we have, have to in these moments look to those silver linings sometimes, Professor. And, and look, I, I know you also started your career at the IMF. We're in this moment where the IMF is meeting today in Morocco. What does Israel need, not just uniting the country itself, but from the global community? What is necessary in terms of response and aid? Well, I would say first that right now for Israelis, the state of the economy and the economic consequences are not what is on, on the mind of Israelis. Now, I think what we do need is, uh, is support. I think what we've seen yesterday in the speech by President Biden was really heartwarming in terms of uh, the support for Israel at this very, very difficult time on all fronts. We're trying to understand what happens next. Uh, I, I don't think anybody really ha has a full grasp of that. We've just had some additional news this morning on, uh, on missiles coming in from Lebanon. There's talk of a full-scale uh, land invasion. I now want you to turn and, and try and put in perspective economically the, the impact. We don't know how long this, uh, this war will endure, but from Israel's perspective, how much risk is there now to the economy? How much risk is there to the outlook? Well, if we look back at uh, previous uh, um, wars, you know, the economy will probably uh, have a big blow, but at least in the past, it had recovered very, uh, I would say, rapidly and strongly. Uh, but, of course, uh, the extent of the damage to the economy will depend on how things unfold and how long this war uh, will be and how broad it will be. So we will see definitely a very sharp decline in some sectors. Uh, first of all, tourism, private consumption, investment, and some of these effects are prolonged. Uh, so, uh, you know, if we look at back mm -hmm. at the uh, Second Lebanon War, uh, there was a very sharp decline in the last quarter of 2006, but then a, an mm -hmm. as stronger recovery by the next quarter. But it's very hard to say, wh you know, whether what we're going to go through now will be of the same order of magnitude. The, the number of reservists that have been uh, drafted is uh, much, much Indeed. larger. And we don't know right. the scale of the war that is coming. So uh, to that Maybe point, I Professor, we have seen, uh, seen, of course, the shekel was somewhat stabilized from the action of the central bank. But there were credit default swaps which spiked. Last year with Bloomberg, you spoke to Manus. You warned about the credit rating with the judiciary upheaval. Is the credit rating now even severely more under threat with now Israel at war? It's very hard to say because on the one hand, I think the, my, my guess is that the judiciary reform is off the table now. So in that sense, that risk is over. But obviously the geopolitical risk seems to have intensified. So it's very hard to say how the, what would be the reaction of the credit rating agencies. I have to say though that uh, our financial institutions have been uh, have exhibited uh, resilience over the last two significant shocks. They're 
very uh, well capitalized, they're very tightly regulated. So I think in, in terms of financial stability, uh, uh, we are okay. And also I think the way the central bank reacted, uh, it has demonstrated that it has the ability to really react uh, swiftly mm -hmm. to the shock and to ensure the functioning of all markets. So in that sense, I think um, we are okay in terms of the financial markets and financial developments. Professor, can we just pick up on that? The central bank obviously defended the currency. I, I think in this, not I think, in their statement, they said that they had sold as much as $30 billion. Now, we don't have the final number. That's no small amount for an economy at the size of Israel. I know there's nearly 200 billion of reserves. My question to you is, you said that they acted well and, and, and held the defense of the currency. Do you think they're going to have to do considerably more intervention than that? Will the market test? If there's a full-scale ground invasion, if there is a serious escalation, as Hezbollah claims that they have fired uh, on Israel, if there's major escalation, do you think that they will have to intervene again in size? Uh, well, they said that they will sell up to $30 billion. That's a huge amount for the market. And I think that is uh, that was enough to calm the market. And I'm sure, given the size of our uh, reserves, I think that if, the, if there will be a necessity for more, they will do more. They said also that they're willing to inject liquidity mm -hmm. uh, uh, of $15 billion. So I think it should be enough. And if there is more mm -hmm. needed, I think we've seen that actually the, uh, just the announcement was uh, enough in order to calm the market, the foreign exchange market. With that in mind, you talk about the swap. You talk about the swap. Fifteen billion dollars of swap mechanisms have been created, uh, Professor. I suppose what goes through Danny and I's mind is that's a reassurance. Mm -hmm. In times of high crisis, swap lines are incredibly important. How much more detail do you want, or does the market need in terms of the Fed's participation in these swap lines, or what additional swap lines are available globally? Is that is that a psychological defense that can be bolstered? I think that. Uh it's not necessary for the moment. I think, as you mentioned, that there are $200 billion of reserves. It's a, a huge amount that can really uh, right. be sufficient. And I think the market, again, the reaction of the market shows that the, uh, just the announcement was enough to calm the market. Professor Flug, earlier in the year, we did have those in the right-wing government that did assail the current Bank of Israel Gover Governor Amir Yaron. His term comes to an end in December. How important is it in this moment of unknowingness, of war, of necessary stability that he stays on? I very much hope he stays on. I think that would be the best demonstration that the government wants a strong and independent central bank. So I think that could be a very important step to demonstrate that. There's also been discussion at the political level uh, that a coalition needs to be built. How important is it for the country and for uh, continuity, stability, confidence that, that a coalition government is formed? Is it something that you would, you would vouch for, call for, support? I think generally unity at this very difficult time is uh, called for, but I won't get uh, any further into that. Fair enough. Now, you, you, you did mention some of the concerns when it comes to the economic impact. Again, just when we're trying to understand the contours and the natures of it, you, there were concerns on FDI already previ previously to this. Again, concerns about what's happening with some of the government, some of the judiciary reforms. How crucial is that FDI conversation right now? Well, I think it's hard to, to think about it right now. We're in the middle mm. of a crisis, and I think that we will have to see how we come out of it. Uh, again, in the past, the extent of the damage to the economy of a war that has not been long, 
has not been very severe, but it's very hard to say uh, that uh, the past can teach us about uh, what will happen now, given the uncertainty about the severity, the length, and the contours of this uh, current war. As you look at the landscape, we are in day five. There are escalations around uh, further attacks from from an economic and from a monetary policy point of view, what is the biggest risk now? I think if looking at the financial stability, Israel, because of the strength of our institutions and our, uh, our very active central bank, I think we're okay. I think there may be a longer term damage to the economy. It will depend on the extent and the size and the, the, uh, uh, what happens uh, in terms of the war, but also on the reaction of the government uh, later on. I think in the moment it has to allocate all the necessary resources to finance the war and to finance the reconstruction and compensating people. And as soon as the, uh, this is over, I think the question would be where we're going from there, but we're not yet at this stage uh, asking these questions. Professor Flug, we, we know that this is a moment of, of hardship and heartbreak, and we really appreciate your time with us today. That's Karnit Flug, former governor of the Bank of Israel.